of sowing. A time to celebrate the return of the spirits to the Summerland. This is a time when the barriers between our world and the world below become shifted and blurred. This is a time of communicative magic. This is a time when the natural world, our ecological systems, take on a more magical appearance. And so, at such a time, I, Professor Jiggett, adventurer, storyteller, goblin scientist, fairy hunter, invite you to explore the wonders of the natural world through the Magical Natural History Library. Do you accept my invitation? If so, there are a few things you can do. Number one, make a fairy offering. Throughout the month of Samhain, many a fairy will visit our world. To encourage the fairies to your home or garden, you should make them an offering. The best offerings contain healing properties. To make such an offering, you will need Garlic. This acts as an antiseptic. Honey. This is a soothing balm. Time to make the offering smell lovely. Cobwebs to act as a bandage. Once you have all your ingredients, it's time to make your fairy offering. First, simply dip the garlic in the honey. Ooh, sticky. Then sprinkle over some of the thyme leaves. Oh, the scent. <laughs> then wrap up the garlic honey and thyme in the cobwebs. There you have it, a fairy offering. Then leave your offering on a windowsill or doorstep and await the fairies to visit you. If you don't have these things to hand, don't worry, pester your parents. Go to the supermarket, buy some, do it at home. Number two, write a rune written letter. If you are going to encourage fairies into your household, it's a good idea to leave them a letter written in invisible secret runes. To do this, you will need to make invisible ink. You make invisible ink by using the following items. 60 milliliters of freshest water, 60 milliliters of baking soda, cotton buds, grape juice, or any dark colored juice. Mix 60 milliliters of water with 60 milliliters of baking soda. Put it in a bowl. Dip a cotton bud into this ink. Then write your runes onto the paper. When you want to reveal your secret message, dip another cotton bud into the grape juice and wash over the runes. There, the secret message has revealed itself. Number three, design your own fairy. When the fairies visit our world, they like to live in our flowers, plants, and trees. Because of this, they often take on the characteristics of the plant or tree they are living in. For example, a fairy in a sycamore tree might have big hands because the sycamore leaves look like big hands. Those fairies living in a hawthorn, they might be rather prickly because hawthorns have thorns. <laughs> now, using the trees and plants in your fun palaces pack, you can design your own fairy, goblin, pixie, gnome, imp, elf, or troll. Let your imagination run wild. Just make sure they take on a few attributes of a plant, flower, or tree. Have you finished all your tasks? If so, well done. Now, there's one more thing to say. I, Professor Jiggett, will be live in person at Presswich Library 
on Sunday, the 2nd of October. There, I can guide you around the magical Natural History Library, showing you fairy manuscripts, artwork, and even a few of my field notes. Hopefully, I'll see you all there. If not, until next time, keep wondering, keep telling stories, don't shy away from nonsense. Always find an adventure. Bye now. Goodbye.